So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As Brian introduced me, I am Sasha Scattergood. I am the product manager for Energia, and I will be explaining some exciting research we did with the Michigan State University. So our relationship, so our relationship with MSU began with the installation of a 400 kilowatt anaerobic digester that co-digests food waste and manure from campus activities. While construction was underway on the anaerobic digester, we saw an opportunity to join with MSU and answer conclusively questions we had uh, pertaining to nutrient recovery. So through a self-funded project, Energia uh, joined with Dr. Dana Kirk to set up a pilot experiment at the Anaerobic Digester Research and Education Center at MSU, the, better known as the ADREC. These projects were overseen by our director of R&D, Michael Theodolou. He's here in Burlington, Ontario, Canada. So now that you now that you know the players, let me take a moment to better explain their experience. So energy is a global leader in the recovery of value from organic waste. We have an extensive history with 20 plus years of experience, installation at over 1,600 digesters worldwide and more than 355 megawatts of installed capacity globally. The MSU ADREC Consortium is a one-stop shop for anaerobic digestion research. Their, their facilities, uh, they're equipped with labs, pilot facilities, and a combination of full-scale operations. Furthermore, furthermore, another advantage to ADREC is they have the unique ability to be able to offer access to, access to all their raw substrates, digestate, filtrate, cake, biogas, and any combination for all your research activities. So I think we got so I think we can all agree that a zero organic waste future would be ideal. But what does this mean, really? Today we have an excess of waste and a shortfall of energy, clean water, and fertilizer. The ideal, the ideal solution would be to take the abundant waste and generate the aforementioned resources. Today I'm, I'm going to focus my attention on the recovery of fertilizer and how we can make products after anaerobic digestion. So how, we, so how can we recover resources from the digestate? Well, we start with a dilute stream of anaerobic digestate, somewhere between 2% to 6% total solids. And then we use a form of solid liquid separation. And the separation will remove the suspended solids along with the majority of the phosphorus and also some of the inorganic nitrogen, or sorry, organic nitrogen. Next, we have to treat the liquid, to treat the liquid fraction. And this will contain most of the inorganic nitrogen and also some potassium, or most of the potassium. To recover, to recover the ammonia, we use air stripping and scrub with acid to produce either a liquid ammonia product or upgrade into some form of a solid pellet, uh, a pearl or, or something prilled. With most of the nitrogen removed, we can now concentrate the potassium, which is left in the filtrate. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it look like. So food waste and manure are anaerobically digested. So food waste and manure are anaerobically digested. The biogas, which is produced, is sent to a cogen, uh, combined heat and power unit, and heat and electricity are generated. The digestate from the anaerobic digester is removed periodically, and the solids are separated. The liquid fraction we heat using waste heat from the cogen before air stripping to remove, to remove the ammonia. Ammonia is scrubbed in an acid tower and the product sold as fertilizer. For solid nitrates, you might need some form of a dilution water before pumping and that can just come back in this stream here. So focusing on the ammonia stripping. Focus ammonia stripping. Digestic. Digestate will contain somewhere between 1,500 and 5,000 milligrams per liter of ammonia, and 70 to 80 percent of that will partition into the filtrate. To shift the equilibrium from ammonia to ammonia, we raise the temperature. Once heated, once heated we, can strip the, we can strip the soluble CO2, which raises the pH and further unionizes the ammonia. When temperature is about 140 degrees Fahrenheit and pH is above 9.2, 
over 90% of the ammonia can be stripped. As you continue to aerate the filtrate, ammonia will enter into the gas phase, and we call this the, the overheads. And the overheads are sent to a scrubber, where any number of acids can be used to make fertilizer, with sulfuric acid being the common one. However, you can use nitric acid to make ammonium nitrate, or phosphoric acid to make ammonium phosphate. So, as you know, so as many of you know from experience with land applying fertilizer and also the storage of manure, ammonia, which is NH3, is the fraction that will volatilize. So you'll lose that uh, to the gas, basically. So here you can see the dependence of ammonia to temperature and pH. So with higher temperatures, you can basically you can basically have a lower pH and still achieve the same unionized portion of ammonia. I compare that to lower temperatures and you need a higher pH to achieve ammonia, which is the, the fraction that we can easily strip. So I've been, so I've been stressing the importance of se separating the solids from the digestate before stripping, and here, here's why it's critical. The suspended solids and fibers, if they're left in the digestate, during the air stripping process, they'll, they'll interfere with the gas transfer and aeration equipment and will clog the, the aerators and decrease the efficiency of the overall system. Also, if not properly removed, there's a potential for struvite and calcium phosphate. They can interfere with the aeration and precipitate in the aeration tank. And lastly, at the digestate stage, it's still quite easy to separate most of the phosphorus and the inorganic nitrogen. So now the stage is set. Let's discuss the MSU research project and the performance trials that we conducted here. So here you can see the anaerobic digester and the digestate storage tank. And over here is the combined heat and power unit at MSU. The basic recipe for their anaerobic digester is dairy manure, so 17 tons per day, campus and external food waste, so that's anything from, you know, fruit waste that comes in from external to the scrapings from plates from the campus, the cafeterias, and then also fast oil and grease, which come from restaurants and fast food, fast food restaurants. So here's, just, here's just some offloading. A few pictures of the food waste being loaded into the reception pits. The food waste is an example of a substrate that's moderately high in nitrogen, and it would also obviously require some form of dilution before you can treat it with a wet AD process. So here's a pile of uh, fruit waste, and you, you can't obviously just throw that into a pump and expect to be able to pump it, so we have to dilute it first. The manure the manure is another example of a substrate that's high in ammonia. It comes in various forms. It can either be a liquid, uh, liquid, a slurry, or a solid. Here you can see some solid manure being loaded into a liquid reception pit, and we're using the liquid fraction to dilute the solid fraction so it can be pumped. So this blend, so this blend of substrates resulting in a digestate with an average parameters around 4,000 milligrams per liter in ammonia, 5,500 milligrams per liter in, in total nitrogen, and around 13,000 milligrams per liter in bicarbonate alkalinity. And this is really an ideal blend and perfect for ammonia recovery. The digestate was treated first on site with a UTS screw press. That that removed the fibers uh, as well as some of the suspended solids. The filtrate was then heated using a boiler that was fired on biogas. And the last critical piece was really the knowledgeable staff uh, that they're at the ADRAC at the MSU facility. They, they helped us do all the lab analysis and really chipped in and helped out. So the ammonia, the ammonia stripper was tested in a batch mode with filtrate stored in temporary buffer tanks. And throughout the testing period, uh, samples were removed from the stripping tank and tested at the Adric lab. So the first, 
So the first critical piece that we had to prove is the pH adjustment using air stripping. So here's the, the, the curve of pH, and here's the curve of alkalinity. So again, so again the pH curve, you can see as time, as time goes on, you increase the pH. Whereas in the case of alkalinity, the alkalinity with time continuing, it goes down. So why does this happen? So so conditions in the anaerobic digester are typically around 60% methane and somewhere around 40% carbon dioxide. With the high carbon dioxide car concentrations, there is elevated levels of what's known as carbonic acid in the digestate. So during air sparging, the CO2, or carbon dioxide, is removed, which reacts with the hydronium ion in, as part of, with the alkalinity, and this increases the pH. However, there is a point, there is a point, <laughs> the slide keeps flipping back there, but there is a point where you actually see a decreasing trend in the pH, and what this can be explained by is the ammonia, which is releasing a hydronium ion when it's being air stripped. Okay, so as, okay, so as I said, as ammonia is being removed, you can see the concentration of ammonia is decreasing. And here's your overall trend of removal rate. And the reason, and the reason that this curve starts to settle out and become less steep is we're dealing with what's known as a first order reaction. And that just means the lower the concentration, the more difficult it is to remove. So after after the air stripping trials were concluded, we were really happy to find that liquid air ratios were quite low, and they were in the range of 600 to 800 liters of air per liter of filtrate treated. When we compare this to other technologies like back bed strippers, uh, we had about 85% less air requirements. Uh, one other important observation it was, the, was the maximum aeration rate that we could achieve. It was found to be limited by what we call liquid carryover. And uh, this is into the gas overheads. This can be thought of like shaking a bottle of pop, basically, and opening the lid. So you just have too much gas trying to escape, and it just carries out with it a lot, a lot of liquid. It was, uh, it was a simple fix. What we needed to do was just operate the air strippers below a critical aeration rate. We also found some foam. It was observed, but uh, we were easily able to control this using mechanical foam suppression, but uh, we do recognize that in other cases, foam, foam might have to be suppressed with some form of an anti-foaming agent uh, if there's a high presence of surfactants or fast oil and grease. So, so question I guess we have to ask during air stripping is what about precipitation? So the high pH conditions in the stripper does pose a risk of struvite and calcium phosphate precipitation. And in, partic in particular, the high turbulence conditions at the surface of the aerators would be, the, would be really the local areas prone to precipitation. After te testing uh, was all complete, we inspected the vessels and really found that there was no struvite uh, precipitated. So here's a picture of some of the aerators. And what we would see if there was precipitation would be white, kind of pinkish crystals uh, formed all over the surface of the aerators. But again, but again, as with the foaming, this is going to be a case-by-case -case basis. So we have to really look at it on, uh, on a specific terms and refer to the digestive streams in particular. So I, I think you're all interested in, in what we can make from this uh, stripped ammonia. So the final product after ammonia stripping is, is commonly ammonium sulfate. So you can see here here's a, is a liquid ammonium sulfate sample, and here's two versions of prilled ammonium sulfate. One is a finer uh, small prill, and one is a larger prill. The fertilizer value of the liquid one is, is 8009, so that means it's 8% nitrogen by weight and 9% sulfur by weight. And the prilled version, or the dried ammonium sulfate, is 
21% ammonia, or sorry, 21% nitrogen by weight and 24% sulfur by weight. Uh, well, examples uh, the, for the production on a specific farm basis, you would produce about 7.6 pounds of dry ammonium sulfate per 100 birds per day, or sorry, per 1,000 birds per day. And in a, for a dairy cow, you produce about 3.2 pounds per day of dry ammonium sulfate per lactating cow. So this is so this is a bit of an example specific to anaerobic digestate, but there's cases that in, in addition to the fertilizer value, you also have uh, uh, a requirement for dilution water. And that's particularly important when you feed dry substrates such as chicken manure, food waste, or even some energy crops. So the filtrate or digestate can always be used in its raw form. And that's because it can lead to what's known as ammonia toxicity in, in the anaerobic digester. And this really just reduces the methane yield in the digester. Typically, uh, a safe operating condition for ammonium is somewhere less than around 4,500 4, milligrams per liter as NH3N. And for ammonia, it's around 500 milligrams per liter NH3N as well. So with the deammonified filtrate, your dilution requirements uh, are easier to achieve without worrying about disrupting the, the process. So here's an example of uh, chicken manure basically in its, in its form as collected from the lane, lane facility and you use dilution water to make a slurry such that you can pump it. All right, in conclusion, I wanted to share with you an example of a project that required ammonia stripping. This is a chicken barn uh, in Singapore. It's a, large, it's a large commercial egg farm. The facility handles around 340,000 eggs per day uh, from around 500, nearly 500,000 chickens. This actually satisfies 8% of Singapore's egg consumption. This is just a photo of the, the dry manure that's there. You can see that's not easily pumpable. The egg, so the, the egg operations yield around 40 tons per day of solid manure. And they actually have future expansion plan for close to 80 tons per day. And unfortunately, the project was even more complicated by the fact that there's a zero liquid discharge requirement and there is no access to a lagoon. So here's a, just a photo of the farm. Again, this is uh, in Singapore, so it's a very tropical environment. Temperatures can be up to 105 degrees Fahrenheit and relative humidity very high, you know, nearly 100% almost always. One thing to really consider here, again, as I said, there's no lagoons and there's no form of liquid discharge. And the reason really is because Singapore is a, is a very small island, uh, highly urbanized, and farms are very, very tightly constrained. So the solution that we provided in this case, we delivered a single anaerobic digester that treats uh, liquefied manure after, after we blend it with filtrate. Facility produces 500 kilowatts of electricity and an additional 425 kilowatts of heat using the CHP, the combined heat and power unit. The filtrate is treated to remove the ammonia, which yields around 300 or sorry 3,800 pounds of dry ammonium sulfate per day. That's the equivalent to around 800 pounds of, of pure nitrogen per day. Fertilizer value is estimated at around $210,000 a year. And in addition to the, the ammonium sulfate, we were able to produce this nice cake. And the cake had uh, a, a blend of, of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium of around 1.2%, or sorry, 1.7%, 1.6%, and 0.4% respectively. Finally, 
this is just an artist's rendition of, of the ammonia stripping process and how it would look, uh, how it looks at this facility. Uh, sorry, I have a picture for you here. And this is just what it's installed. Here are the ammonia stripping tanks and we have blowers as well as some heat exchangers.